I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist, and this is Equal Entertainment. A stretch of recently trimmed trees along a sidewalk near Universal Studios is the latest flashpoint in the Hollywood battle, and the actors and writers say it was done on purpose. They say the trimming was done to remove a source of shade during a dangerous heat wave. Burbank's mayor says the stretch is not in city limits and the trimming did not come from the city. The mayor also says Southern California has many regulations and that trimming doesn't occur until October. On top of that, no permits were issued for the tree trimming. NBC Universal says the trimming was not intended to create challenges for picketers. Broadway's backstage workers have reached a tentative deal to avoid going on strike. The union representing 1,500 backstage workers has reached a tentative deal with Broadway producers and theater heads. The strike would have shut down shows starting Friday. The deal still needs to be ratified by union members. That's expected to take place in the coming days. These workers attend to 45 shows, 28 on Broadway, and 17 on tour. Tony Award-winning actor Gavin Creel is bringing his talents as the Wolf and Cinderella's Prince to L.A. for a run of Into the Woods. In a wide-ranging conversation, we discuss his love of Stephen Sondheim and the importance of theater right now. We also touch on his solidarity for the strikes. And you, you came from the Broadway yep. with Philippa Sue. Sarah Bareilles, Brian Darcy James, Fatina Miller, yeah. and now you're in this production with Montego Glover, Krista Rodriguez, yes, uh, Stephanie J. Block, Sebastian like, Marcellus, like Katie, Katie Garrity. Like incredible. We have an incredible cast. It's so good. And would you talk a little bit about um, you know just the kind of changes in your role uh, with this new cast? Yeah, you know. The great thing about acting that I find is we have to do the same, basically like the same episode of television eight times a week over and over for hundreds of performances, right? If, you do, if you're lucky enough to get a long run. And people who work in film and TV, for example, we're in LA now and obviously most people, well, not right now because of the horrible strike and right. solidarity to, to all the union members. Um, but uh, they always like, you do the same thing over and over. That sounds so, we get a new script every week and we're 22 episodes or 10 episodes or whatever. Yeah. And what's great about that for us is that we, we get to change based on who's opposite us, not just on stage, which is what's so wonderful about uh, switching cast members, but the audiences change every night. So our mm -hmm. whole existence in this, this show is dependent on you out there. And we have been lucky enough in this process to have rock star audiences. I'm sure you felt it on Saturday. Yeah. You're like, this is into the woods. What's wrong with you people? And you realize it's almost 40 years of a relationship with the score and a story. Mm -hmm. And it's a lifetime of these tales of these wonderful fairy, fairy tales. Yeah. And then the, 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 the Disney movie with Emily Blunt, who's my favorite actress of all time. And, 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 and <laughs> one just, of my favorites, you're oh, hit, I'm there with yeah, you. <laughs> I love her. And she came to see it on Broadway and Brian Darcy James did a movie with her. And I said, I want to meet her. And she was so nice. I have to tell you, I came out afterwards and she was like, you were so good. And, and I said, thank you so much, blah, blah, blah. And then while they were some other people talking, I was standing next to her. I said, I just have to say, I never do this, Tracy. But I was like, I just have to tell you, you are my favorite actress. And she said, she said, Brian told me that you like my work. And I was like, <laughs> I was so embarrassed and also va validated. I was like, yes, I love your work. You are the greatest. So anyway, it's this relationship, you know, this long relationship with the show that yeah. has reached so many people, but the reactions and LA has not disappointed. They've been some of our greatest, biggest reactions. And we're just like, mm -hmm so lucky to have this relationship with people on stage and and the people in the audience would you talk about playing these maybe you know kind of not slightly unlikable people enjoyable yes that that is my greatest that's thank you for saying that. that's the greatest compliment anybody can give me and also i used to be worried that people you look like you're having so much fun up there and i was like oh gosh does it look like i'm screwing around because i'm very serious about what i do but I think the way to make them, to, to love them is to, because they're villains in a lot of ways, you know, especially the wolf. Um, mm -hmm. And the prince can be played very like stock, handsome prince. And they've written very funny characters, but I have enjoyed sending him up further because 
I wasn't interested in playing like what you would think of as a fairy tale prince. I was interested in playing a prince. What makes him real for me is that he is playing the part of a prince because he ultimately doesn't believe that he is king quality. Mm-hmm. I just think mm-hmm. he, when people come in and see him there, they're like, oh God, here comes the royal family. Oh, yes, your highness. Yes. And he, like, I think he puts on the voice and the air of the, of, of royalty but alone, he's just terrified boy. And I, that is what, that's sort of, and when you get to see the brothers together, fighting over, competing over women and, and being, mm-hmm. what, what are you, why are you here? And what, you get to see the boys who are just like, boys who their parents probably didn't pay much attention to them and they're running around a huge empty castle. And I love trying to find the reality of it, which you may or may not see, but it gives me the mm-hmm. ability to, to just play the role again and again. And they're both, the big thing I say that, that holds these two characters in common is they're both starving. One is literally starving and one is starving for everything that he can't be, you know, ambition and popularity and leadership and power. And they're just, and, and, and most of all, validation from all these different women that he keeps chasing and then dropping. And Cinderella is the first person who's like, no. <laughs> no scumbag. That, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely not. You cheating scumbag. <laughs> and, then I have to, and then what's great about it is that last scene, I have to confront like nobody talks to me like that. Right. And we've had that happen in our lives a million times when we like we're bopping along and then somebody goes, um, excuse me, no, you can't behave like that with me. And you're like, but oh, you know, I love it. I love that. Well, you anticipated a lot of where I was headed. Oh, uh, okay. so thank you. No, thank you for that. I mean, I was just thinking like no one is alone. That song that really hits different now. Um, yeah, does. yeah. I do want to, you kind of leaned into this a little bit. I just want to ask you uh, a final question about uh, doing musical theater should not come off as a radical act, but at this time of attacks on queer people and the arts, yes. Yes. Uh, it is a radical act to just sing and dance yes joyfully and, and be yourself yeah. and to be free yeah what it, what does that mean to you to be a part of that can i say something it's, it's yeah. going to sound like a shameless plug but i've written a piece called walk on through confessions of a museum novice that's going to debut off broadway in mm-hmm. november at the mcc theater mm-hmm. and i am a queer person playing i'm playing my it's, i'm playing myself it's it's a musical that i play gavin creel and it's about the true story of me encountering the Metropolitan Museum of Art in the center of my midlife moment, I'll call it, not a crisis, an awakening, feeling extremely lost, but appearing to the world that I must have it all together and not understanding how I fit into my own life. And and it's, I think, I'm hoping it's illuminating to people because those theater people who may know who I am or follow my work, I'm trying to put that vulnerability or that authenticity on stage in a way that exposes my own in, my own insecurities, my own doubts, my own fears. Being a queer person at forty seven years of age, it it doesn't end. This 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 world is hard. It's hard to be queer, and yes, things are getting better, and yes, we're trying. But if we don't tell our own stories and we don't stand up on theater stages, which I'm going to do, and I pray that it gets rave reviews and we get to transfer to Broadway and then I want to take it around the world, but Walk On Through aims to be a queer story that witnesses to other queer people and to all people, but that you don't necessarily have to know what you're doing or where you're going, but you do have to have the courage to try, just try to say who you are and what your story is in whatever medium and whatever platform and stand stand with pride and and say it and it doesn't mean it's going to be easy at all times but i don't know come come to the mcc theater in november and i will share with you what i've learned so far you can watch the advocate channel live by downloading our app in the apple or google play store you can also subscribe to our youtube channel for the advocate channel i'm tracy gilchrist and thank you for watching